with that little bit of brief explanation out of the way, I'll do a quick demo. Um, so I've got two console windows here, one for each host. So this one is host one, and to that one has the domain controller, so I'm going to start that first. So that way the second one can contact the domain controller. And to do that, I just do domain.sh. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to launch the domain controller process, and it's also going to launch the three servers that are um, associated with that. They're all going to be running in separate Java processes, um, but they're all going to end up dumping their console output to the same window. So we'll go start up. Expand this a bit. You can see here these each one of these you can see what process logged. So this is main one, little started message. There's main two, little started message. Further up above, somewhere in here is another started message. There it is. Sorry, it took me a second. From other one. Okay. Um now do the same thing on the other host, and it will quickly start up, and it will also start three servers. Okay. While it's doing that, I'm going to bring up this little um, simple trivial command line client I wrote today. Um, that basically um, AS7, the domain controller, has a remote protocol um, and a Java-based client that has um, basically a, that has the, uh, the domain controller um, a client API um, available to it can communicate remotely with the domain controller. So basically I, I wrote a little client that does just that. Um, so while that starts up, basically the way this thing works is it dumps this standard out a um, list of choices and you type what you want and it reads it from standard in and executes what you want. So um, so first thing I want to do is have it contact the domain controller and basically just dump out, you know, read back the domain configuration. Um, so we'll actually read back an object model, complex object model that it can do all sorts of things with. But what it's going to do with it first off is just output it again as XML back out the standard out. So you can see all the same stuff that we had when we looked at the domain XML file. It's just coming back to us. You know, here's our server groups, main, other, etc. Um, next thing, I can get the configuration for one of the server managers, which is option three. I'll do that quickly. It asks me, it knows who the running server managers are and it lists them. The domain controller provides that information. So I'll take a look at Pingua Local, which is this first process, first host. And there, main one, main two, other one, local. Okay. Next, I want to see the actual configuration of a running server, what its runtime configuration is. So that's option five. Um, and let's take a look at other two. And again, it, it basically dumps out the configuration. A server configuration is basically um, when the, the server gets started, the process that starts the server basically gets access to the main configuration and to its local host configuration and combines the information to a, a configuration for that individual server and then passes that over to the server and tells it to apply it and start itself according to that configuration. So that's what you have here, all that stuff. Okay, the next thing I want to do, I can, from a client, tell the domain controller to stop a server. So, um, I'm going to stop here, other two. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see, server other two finished. So the next six status is zero. Okay. So, um, I want to start a server. And the only one I can start is, there's only one that isn't started, so that's the only choice I have. And the domain controller knew that, so I was able to get that information from the domain controller to make that list be correct, per correctly limited, and go, go ahead and start that up. And it starts up in two seconds, which is quite nice. Um, 
The next thing I want to do is I'm going to actually add a whole new server that didn't exist before. Um, it's just basic configuration. This little client I wrote can only do some simple configuration, but you can see I can add one. So it asks me the name of the server, what name I want to give it. So I'm going to just call it test. And what server manager do I want it to run on? And uh, let's say server manager 2. And what group does it belong to? And let's put it in the other server group. And it goes ahead and creates one and starts it. There it is. There's your started message in two seconds. And came back, it's started. And um, if I actually dump the server manager configuration for server manager 2, you can see there now I have the test server has been added. Okay. I can also remove a server, but before I can remove it, I have to stop it. You can't remove a server that's actually running. You have to stop it first. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the test server. And now I will remove it. So now it's actually gone from the configuration. If I dump the server manager configuration again, you can see no more test. It's actually gone. Okay, last thing I want to do is a quick little thing called a deployment plan. A deployment plan in AS7 basically allows you to um, add content to the domain, deploy it under the servers in the domain, undeploy things, remove content, um, redeploy, replace, all those kind of deployment operations. So it allows you to basically make a, a list of such actions that you want to take, deploy, you know, deploy this and that and the other. Um, and then it allows you to specify how you want those changes to be rolled out to the servers, um, to which server group they should be applied to, um, whether you want them to be rolled one by one to the servers within the group or done concurrently, um, whether you want it to be applied to multiple server groups. Um, you, there's a lot of configuration on you know, how to handle rollback, um, whether you actually want the servers to restart um, as opposed to having a a live updated deployment. Um, instead, you could apply the deployment by just changing the configuration and restarting the server and it will deploy it as part of a full server start. A lot of different things. Um, so I'm just going to show very quickly um, a simple one. Not, you know, this client doesn't expose all the options, but enough to give you the feel. Okay, so I'm going to create and execute a deployment plan. Okay, the first thing it asks me is all the different things I can do, um, different actions I can take. Um, add stuff, deploy it, undeploy it, remove it, replace it, etc. So I'm going to just do number two here. I'm going to add some new content to the domain and I'm going to deploy it. And it brings up this nice little file chooser dialog. Um, I'm going to go find a file here. Here's a deployment that I've messed with in the past. Okay. And you can actually see if I go over here to this one, this is the domain controller. Um, it actually logged a little bit of information saying that content with name service XML deployment.sar is added at location, blah, 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 blah. So that's actually information the domain controller pumps out when it actually has had content uploaded to it. Now, that didn't actually cause it to be deployed anywhere, it was just uploaded. Okay, um, next thing I want to do is, okay, now I've, I've said this is the action I want to take, but now I need to specify how I want it to be rolled out. Okay, so that's going to be part of option number nine here, apply deployment actions to a server group. Okay, and oops, bad log message there, i got to fix that. Um, so I want to apply this to the main server group. Okay, so this new deployment is going to end up getting pushed out to the main server group. Okay, once I've done that, I can say, oh, by default, it's going to push those all out um, to all the servers in the group concurrently. But if I didn't like that, I could say roll them out to one at a time. Okay, if I did if I wanted to avoid taking 100% outage, for example, um, so I don't want them all to be upgrading at once. Instead, I can say do it one at a time. Other things I can do is I can say, okay, um, 
we're doing this to the main server group, but I also want to do it to the other server group, to some other server group, and I want that to happen concurrently. Or I can say I want it to go to another server group, but don't start on that second server group until the first one completes, which is what I'm going to do here. Okay, so I've got I've already said I want to take that deployment and push it to the main server group, um, but now I also want to push it to another one. And the only remaining server group that I can choose is the other server group. So I do that. And finally, um, I will go ahead and execute the plan. Let's, let's go ahead and do it. And it did it. So actually you can see um, completed the deployment plan. You can see a bunch of services that were part of the deployment. Okay, there it is, activated. You can see activating deployment on the three different servers. Okay. So it's pushed out. Same thing here. Okay. So that's just some basic administration um, of JBoss AS via the domain controller. I hope you found this informative. There's lots more stuff, and please um, encourage you to download JBoss AS7 Alpha 1 and try it out and play and give us your feedback. Um, thank you very much. Bye-bye.